Steven. How you all doing out there? Whoa. One skill you want to master in this day and age that we live in, if you want to have an extraordinary life, it's the ability to learn rapidly. Because today, there is more opportunity to do more things, learn things, create things, experience things than any time in human history. But most people are way, way, way behind the times unless they grew up with technology and learning. So I would like to start this morning by showing you the strategy for learning. What is learning? So if we take a human being, and uh, this will be a drawing of a human being, so you can see that again I majored in art. <laughs> Magnificent, isn't it? <laughs> so if we take a human being, and we want to be able to have them learn something, what is learning? Well, learning is the creation of, and here's the key word, of a relationship. Whenever you learn something, all you're really doing is creating a relationship between two things. So if I want to learn something, so how do I learn this? It's not figuring things out. That's how most of us think of learning. Learning is not figuring things out. Learning is the creation of relationship between two things. Something you already know, the known. Something you already know, it's in your head already, you understand it. And a relationship between the known and the, what would you guess? The unknown. Because the minute you link something you understand to something you don't understand, you now understand what you didn't understand. Let me give you an example to become much more clear. The best teachers throughout human history were teachers that used metaphors or similes. I don't know what your religious belief is, but I'm not here to tell you what to believe religiously. But I personally am a Christian, and there are a lot of great teachers, and Christ clearly is one, because thousands of years later, here are these great teachings. When Christ wanted to teach fishermen how to bring people to the Christian church, did he say, I want you to go out and be a headhunter? Did he say, I want you to go out and recruit Christians? Did he use the word recruit, yes or no? No, because they have no reference. No, there's nothing related to recruit to them. But since they were fishermen, he said, he said, I want you to become fishers of men. And instantaneously, they understood the entire process of recruiting. What do you do? You feel a little bait out, and they start to bite, reel them in, right? They understood the entire process because he related something they wouldn't have understood, like how to recruit somebody for a church, to something they already understood, something they already knew. How many follow this? Say I. How many of you saw the movie Dances with Wolves with Kevin Costner? Did you like it? It's been a long time. Now, do you remember in that movie there was a scene where Kevin Costner meets these three Indians for the first time. He's sitting in his own little camp, and these three Indians come in on horseback. Do you remember that? And it's the first interaction with the Indians. And it's kind of a, a tense moment, because he doesn't know if they're going to attack or what they're going to do. And they come up, and they're just standing there. And he looks at them, and they look at him, and just, there's this moment of silence. And all of a sudden, the Indian goes, ha, ah, ta, ta, ta. And he searched 10 million files and goes, nope, no knowns in there. Right? And the other Indian goes, oh, so ha, ho, ya, ma, na, no, ho, ya, ma, ha. And he's like, I don't know, right? So he, he says, well, hello, how are you? And they hear, they search their files and find nothing. So then he does something really smart. He starts doing this. He bends over like this, takes his fingers like this, and he starts moving his leg like this. He goes, hmm, 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 buffalo, hmm, buffalo, hmm, buffalo. And the one Indian looks at the other Indian and he goes, he's been drinking too much fire water. Remember? And the other Indian goes, no, no. And he goes, mm, buffalo, mm, buffalo. And the one other Indian, he goes, ah, ah. And he puts his fingers up like this, doesn't he? And he goes, mm, mm, tatunga, mm, tatunga, mm, buffalo, mm, tatunga, buffalo, tatunga, buffalo, tatunga. What happens? He now knows tatunga is, and they know buffalo is. Immediately there's learning because he figured a way to get across something they both knew, they both seen on the plains and linked to something they didn't know, to Tonga or Buffalo, depending upon their life experience. Now, whenever you don't learn, it's because someone is trying to teach you in a different way. And the different way is, I, I was a good student in school. I liked learning. Until I got to junior high school, high school, where I liked all subjects until I got to there, when math became algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. Because when I got there, I totally hated it. So I had no motivation to really learn it. And with no drive to learn something, you don't. But then secondly, since I wasn't driven, it was also the class that usually had the most homework. And if you didn't end the homework, 
and you came in the next day, it was like being in a foreign language class. The hypotenuse of X, Y, Z over, and I'm, all I'm hearing is, oh, that, 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 ah, ah, oh, yeah. My brain's searching, going, I don't know what that is. So then I would raise my hand to ask a question, which is not a good thing to do in that environment. So I'd say, well, what is a hypotenuse? And they go, oh, you don't know? That's really like, you don't know. So if you want to learn something, if you're not learning, it's not that you're not smart. It's not that you can't figure it out. It's that the person is explaining it using references you don't have. So I've learned things like quantum physics. I've learned things like nuclear power from physicists. But I'll say, okay, explain to me how that's like an orange, <laughs> right? How's that at least like a solar system? Something I understand. And sure enough, once they make that linkage, you got it. You understand the relationship. You understand what things are. So this morning, I want to share with you strategies, but I'll do it by using more of a known. So I want to write down strategies real quickly as the definition was given to us when I was learning. A strategy is a set of neurological impulses organized into a specific syntax which shapes emotional, biochemical, behavioral responses to such an extent that the stimulus response is consistent. That's how they described us, what strategies were. And so we were lost about halfway through the third sentence. And so what happens is when you can't figure it out, then you go in your head, you go, I can't figure it out, what does he mean, what's going on? And then you're gone because you get out of state of being able to learn. So that's why I took four and a half days. So I'll give you a simpler definition. A strategy is nothing but a specific way of organizing your resources. It's a specific, underline specific, it's very important, it's a specific, it isn't general. A very specific way of organizing your resources in order to, keyword, consistently get a very specific result. So it's a specific way of organizing your resources in order to consistently, not once in a while, consistently get the result you want. Now, what is a resource? Well, it depends on the environment you're using a strategy in. Is time a resource, yes or no? If you're getting the results you want in your life, yes or no? Is human emotion a resource? Yes, if you use anger, are you gonna get different results than if you use joy? Is your physiology a resource for creating that emotion, yes or no? What about the pictures you make in your head? Is that a resource? Is what you say a resource, words a resource, yes or no? Sure, so there's unlimited resources, but the way you organize those resources determine whether you're broke or rich. Your time, your mental focus, your attitude, the way you work or don't work, where you spend money or don't spend money. See, it's not can you be rich or poor, it's just strategy. The problem is most people are unaware of what their strategy is. Most people have an excellent strategy for having too much month at the end of the money. Excellent strategy, and it's very effective, and it consistently produces that result, doesn't it? How many have ever mastered that strategy in your past? Say, ah. But if you organize your resources differently, can you always have an abundance of money, yes or no? Sure can, but it starts with the resources, what's going on here and here, because that's what determines all your other behavior. If we change your mental and emotional pattern, it'll change the way you earn, it'll change the way you spend, it'll change the way you do everything. So the ultimate strategies are mental and emotional because they shape everything else. See, if you're fit or fat is a strategy. You may not be doing it consciously, but there's some way you specifically organize what you eat, when you eat, how much you eat, whether you move or not, how you move, how you sleep. See, all those things determine whether you're fit or fat, whether you've got low energy or high energy. Are there specific ways of organizing your resources of what you focus on, what you breathe, how you feel, how you move, how you eat, that will consistently cause you to have low levels of energy or even bet. Are there strategies of dis-ease that if you consistently do this, you can count on having disease in your body, yes or no? Are there strategies of energy and health, yes or no? We're gonna focus on those tomorrow. So there are strategies for anything. Are there strategies for having consistent passion and love in an intimate relationship, do you think, yes or no? And are there strategies that'll cause you to constantly be pissed off or sad? Yes, focusing on yourself as a focus tool as an example. Using your body in a certain way, thinking about things in a certain way. So anything you've ever done, almost everyone in this room, who here has ever had a relationship for some period of time, even a day, where it was magnificently fulfilling and exciting for you and the other person? Say, I. Then you have a strategy, and you think it's time that changes, but it's not, it's your strategy. So the secret this morning is identifying 
what is it that you do when you succeed and then doing just that when you want to succeed each time? It's like once you know the buttons, you hit those buttons and make it happen. 